I'm John Mars, a member of the Home Base Professional Learning Team in the Digital Teaching and Learning Division at the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. We wanted to create a quick video aimed at teachers to discuss the new 1R Present Off-Site Attendance Code. This new code was created by NCDPI to allow schools to track students who are present on-site versus those who are present off-site. This code does require that PowerTeacher users determine not only whether a student is present or absent, but if they're present, whether they're on-site or off-site. Thanks to a few PowerTeacher shortcuts, this is not a significant amount of extra work. However, it will require a little bit of extra attention. Please note that in this video, we are only covering core PowerTeacher functions. If you have any questions about your school's specific attendance expectations, please talk to your school data manager or principal. So the typical process to take attendance really has not changed. Depending on how your school is set up, you may be required to take attendance in every class that's listed in your Power Teacher portal, or you may only need to take attendance in a homeroom course. Speak to your school's data manager or principal if you're unclear about the expectations for your school. So as usual, we can click on the chair to get started. And depending on how our class is set up, we may have some students who are going to be present off-site certain days. We may have some students who are present on-site all the time. It could be a crazy mix, right? But as usual, a blank means present on-site. Or you can click in and mark them as present off-site or even as absent. So that process really is not changed. You'll put in your attendance and then click Submit. I could then go in later if I needed to, if it turned out that this student who was marked present off-site didn't actually turn in that work. You can always go back and change it to absent. I will note that the number of days you can go back will depend on your individual school. Your data manager may allow you to go back up to 10 days. They may only allow you to go back a few days or they might not allow you to go back at all. You'll have to speak to them to find out how it's set up in your school specifically. Since there are so many varied setups out there, we also want to take some time to look at the multi-day attendance screen. If you have, for example, a class section that meets off-site every day, if you're in a Plan C school or district, then you might want to go ahead and mark your present off-site codes for all of your students all at one time. And with the multi-day attendance screen, we can do that. So this next icon in the Power Teacher portal, the grid, that will take you to the multi-day attendance screen. And you can see here the absences and remote presence we entered in the previous segment are already here. But I can also edit into the future and, if my data manager allows me, into the past. So if I need to set all of my students to be present off-site this coming Monday, I'll select the present off-site code from the drop-down, and then I'll just click on Monday. It will fill every blank box with the code I selected. And in fact, I know that this class is going to be remote present for this entire next week, so I can just go ahead and put that in now. You'll note the student has an absence entered on Friday by an administrator, which is indicated by the parentheses. That means I cannot change it. So when I changed Friday, it just skipped right over that. Once you're done, you'll just submit like normal. I'll also point out on this screen, especially if you are a high school teacher, you might want to click this Show Multiple Sections button. And what that's going to do is allow you to edit the attendance for multiple class sections at a time. My example is in an elementary school and I have the same students in both sections, so you can't really see the full benefit of this here. But in a high school, you might see all four of your math classes listed on one screen with every student and you could mark them all remote present at once, just the same way. So the last thing we really wanted to cover today was using seating charts. Um, so we know that there are a lot of very different things that data managers and principals across our state are doing with remote learning. So some teachers may have class sections where their cohort A kids are separated from cohort B or separated from remote. 
other schools might have it set up where their teachers have multiple types of students in one section. They might have five who are all remote and six that come on A days and the rest of them come on B days. Um, and in those mixed sections, things can get a little hard to manage when all of the power teacher attendance screens are in alphabetical order. So seating charts can allow you to arrange your own sort of design of students and make this a lot easier to manage. So to do that, we're going to go to this third icon now, the chair with a grid. And when you come in, if you haven't made a layout before, it's going to tell you your default layout is blank. We can go ahead and click OK. That's fine. We'll let it pre-populate. And it's pre-populated our layout with all of our students. So we're going to flip over to the seating chart design tab. And over here, we can actually start to design our area. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some text. And I'm going to make an area for my cohort A students. So these will be the students who are on site today. And then I'm going to make another little area for my remote students. These are the students who will be remote today. And now we can very simply just drag and drop all of this stuff and arrange it where we like. So I'm going to put my cohort A kids that I'm going to see today up here. And by the way, you can move multiple students at once. If you hold down the shift key, you can select all of these and we're going to move them down to being remote. And you'll have to kind of arrange them the way you want and the way you like. You might make this look like your classroom or something like that. Um, these can be very helpful for substitute teachers too. You can actually print these out later and your substitute can use them to take attendance in the room. Um, so a lot of cool stuff you can do with this if you really get into it. You can see you can add like different objects like a board or something up here if you wanted. Um, all sorts of different stuff. You can get really creative here. But once you've kind of got it arranged the way you like, so I know that on this day when I use this seating chart, these are my kids I'm going to see, and these are my kids that should be online. So I'm going to go ahead and click edit up here to save the chart. And we're going to call this our cohort A chart. And now we've got our chart up here. So when we're ready to use this chart, did I not? Oh, you have to click save here too. Sorry. So when you're ready to use this chart, now you can click on that chair with a grid again, and it'll jump you into the seating chart view. You can change which chart you're looking at here. So if you made a second chart for your cohort B day, and you switch these kids around, but now you can go in and you can set all of your cohort A students in this area, you know you're supposed to see them. You can put in their present on-site codes and any absences. And then down here in the remote section, we can mark these students remote because we know that they are supposed to be logging in today. And we expect to see them on Canvas or whatever we may be using. And once you've marked all your attendance here, just like the normal screens, you'll click Submit. And now your attendance is done. So we've looked at several ways that you can manage attendance in the 2021 school year using core power teacher functions that have always been there. The single day attendance screen that most of you are used to is still there. The only difference is that new 1R present offsite code that you have to mark. We've shown you the multi-day attendance screen, which can be used both in an elementary or a high school. You can do one class or multiple classes all at once. You can do one day or multiple days all at once and you can set all of those students to have the same attendance code, maybe present off-site, all at one time. So, we hope that this has been helpful for you. If you are a teacher and you have any specific questions, please reach out to your school data manager or your principal. They will be able to talk to you about your school's specific attendance expectations. They will be able to tell you what your PSU considers to be a present off-site student. Um, there are a few different decisions that school administrators can make around that. Um, so there's not just a one default DPI says this answer to how to use that code. So please talk to your principals. Please talk to your data managers. If you are a data manager and you have questions, please feel free to reach out to the home base team or submit a ticket to PowerSchool. 
Thank you for joining us for this video, and we hope you have a great school year.